morning, everyone. I was waiting for Dan to walk in, but he's, he surprised me like Carr surprised him the other day. Yes, it is. Um, but I just wanted to say a little bit about that song. That was a new song, and I hope that we do it again. But it's one of my favorite songs, and so I love that we have able to, been able to sing it here. Um, and it talks about fighting battles, and we don't really talk a lot about spiritual warfare in the Lutheran church, but uh, I think it, that we know it is a real thing that we have evil and we have good fighting against each other. And so in this song, it really speaks to me because it talks about um, we're fighting our battles with praise and thanksgiving and worship. And so we really think about how Satan really hates those things, but it's such a strong um, thing for us to do to be able to fight back against any evil and badness in our lives. So to focus on those good things. So I just wanted to share that this morning. And thank you for all being here. And we're going to praise God today. Yeah, again, good morning. Welcome to New Creation today. We're very grateful to be together in the house of the Lord one more time to give God thanks and praise for all the things that he's done for us. Uh, today is another special God at Work interview. We've tried to do those maybe once every two months or so, or maybe you know a little bit off. But again, it's a way of connecting faith and daily life, how Sunday relates to Monday and whatnot. And so we're going to have a, a God at Work interview as part of our service today with Michael Hoops. So Thanks for helping out there. Uh, I do want to give a heads up. Next week is rally day already. So our plan for that, again, is having a regular worship service here uh, in the church. We're not going to try to do a, an outside service then. Uh, but we will have service at 1030, or sorry, at 930. Thank you. Don't come at 1030. 930 service as usual. And there's going to be some special uh, raffles and there will be a bounce house, a lot of fun things to do. And it really is an emphasis on being back into the Word of God. So if you do have a Bible that you can bring next week for Rally Day, that would be awesome. We're going to do a couple of things with the Bible during the service. So if you've got a, got a Bible, bring it to worship with you next week. And the other thing that I just wanted to lift up once again was last week we talked about the importance of rest and about taking vacations from our phones or from electronic devices. So I just wanted to, if you hadn't been there, if you hadn't done it yet, a reminder again, if you write down a specific plan that you can make for yourself or your family of how you can take regular vacations from your devices so that you can be totally focused on God's presence, on being still, on knowing the Lord is with you. That I invite us to join together in a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of another day. Thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that we have an opportunity to show you a little bit of the worship and love that you deserve as we sing these songs to you, as we focus our hearts on you, and as we hear your word today. We ask that you would help all of us, uh, again, let go of distractions and place our full focus on your goodness, on your love, on your mercy, that we can receive what you want to give us today. We ask those things in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for our opening worship. All right, let's sing together. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress. Oh, you are my portion. You are my hiding place. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. 
you to be seated as we continue with worship today and begin to sing Lord of all hopefulness and this is a hymn that's been around a very long time it's also it's the same tune as be thou my vision some of you may know that tune a little bit better but uh, this is another song it always reminds me I, I did a wedding of a young farming couple years ago and they chose this as the main song that they wanted to sing right after they were uh, married together I thought that was such a neat thing because it, it talks about how God is with us throughout our day, that God is there in the morning, God is there in the afternoon, God's there in our work, God's there in our rest, God's there in the evening, and really that's the focus that he's got at work interviews, it's the focus of our message today again, that the Lord is not just with us for an hour on a Sunday morning, that faith isn't just about what we do here in the church building, but God is with us throughout every minute of every day, and that our faith involves everything we do every day, so I encourage you to think about that, oh God's with you from the moment that you get up to the moment that you get to bed, and throughout your sleep and everywhere in between. Very pretty song of God's presence with us at all times. And that again is what we try to do each time we come to worship and think about God's sightings. It's why we've incorporated that as a portion of our service to remind ourselves that the Lord is with us throughout each and every day in different moments and that we have an opportunity just to reflect on that. So I invite you today to just pause for a moment and think about where it was that, that you felt God's presence with you in this past week how the Lord might have been comforting you or speaking to you or encouraging you or just helping you to celebrate something. Now, is there anyone that would like to share any God's sight in a way that you felt God's presence or saw the Lord uh, during the course of this past week? I know just talking with Susie and Tony, they're back there. I don't really like to get up in front and, and talk that much, but came back from Boundary Waters. And some of you that you hear last week, I talked about canoeing in northern Minnesota as kind of one of the, my favorite places in the world, just a place of such stillness and peace. And so uh, certainly I got sighted of just having memories of knowing that they were there 
and enjoying that, that beautiful uh, piece of God's creation and certainly hope that all of us can get time to do that too as the, as the fall progresses and before the weather gets too bad uh, to make sure that we take some time to be able to get outside and enjoy the wonderful gift of God's creation around us. All right. Well, again, I encourage you to be able to share with your family and with friends, people around you, ways that you see God's presence in your life. Uh, and with that, we will continue with our scripture readings for today. We have our Bible buddy ready to bring up the word for us. Very good. I want to point out that actually Psalm 46, we just read Psalm 46, but it's a very different translation. So we're going to have the same Bible readings a couple weeks in a row, but you'll notice that this version of Psalm 46 will sound very different from the Lord is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. It's another way that we can use different Bible translations to help us understand God's word in different ways. Our first reading today is Psalm 46, beginning with the first verse. God is a safe place to hide, ready to help when we need him. We stand fearless at the cliff edge of doom, courageous in sea storm and earthquake, before the rush and roar of oceans, the tremors that shift mountains. Jacob wrestling God fights for us. God of angel armies protect us. Attention all, see the marvels of God. He plants flowers and trees all over the earth, bands war from pole to pole, breaks all the weapons across his knee. Step out of the traffic, take a long loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Jacob wrestling God fights for us. God of angel armies protect us. The New Testament reads, is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, beginning with the 16th verse. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus giving thanks through him to God the Father. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the master you are serving is Christ. This is I'm going to invite any of our young people to come up for a children's message here today. Anyone wants to join me up front? I'd love to I have some friends here. I got a special name tag I'm going to put on here. Oh, there we go. Morning. All right. Very good to see you today. And today we have a special Bible reading. I wanted to point this out. We're going to have some Bibles that we're handing out. Some of you have already gotten these Bibles. Uh, especially our older kids, but we've been, we're going to be hand, giving Bibles for our preschool students later on this month, and also we have a second grade Bible, the Jesus Storybook Bible that a lot of you have gotten, right? And then when you're in fourth grade, we've got the hands-on Bible. This has things like science projects and all sorts of really neat things that you can think about putting faith in your life. But today, I wanted to go to the Bible verse that we had from Colossians and see how there's one part of this page that's blue, it has a little blue circle, and it has words that are underlined. That means that they think it's a really important part to stand out. They really want to make sure that we hear that. And so that blue part right here says, Whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. And so I want to talk about what that means a little bit. You know, it means to represent someone. It kind of means, like, see how I have this name tag on that says, Hi, I am a Christian, right? So... Wherever we go, it's kind of like we have one of these name tags on, and we're representing Jesus, whether maybe we're at our house, or maybe we're at school, or maybe we're at the grocery store, or we're at a soccer game, or at a dance practice, or wherever we're at, we're there representing Jesus in what we do and say. And that's a pretty important thing, isn't it? Sometimes I kind of think like, well, I'm just going about my day, I don't really think about what I'm doing, but I've, if you think about that, 
wherever you go, you represent Jesus. So when people see you, they see the way that Jesus is talking, the way that Jesus is acting. That's a really important thing. And it kind of changes the way that I act. So maybe, maybe I'm at a grocery store sometime and I'm just kind of tired and maybe I go to the line at the same time as somebody else and so I try to run a little bit faster and get there before them because I don't want to wait. But I think, well, wait a second. If I'm supposed to be representing Jesus, what would Jesus say, hey, get out of my way, I'm in a hurry? Or would Jesus be more likely to say, why don't you go first? <laughs> All right, why don't you go first? Yeah, that's nice. And I think like, or like if your mom or dad was saying, could you clean your room? Would Jesus be like, no, I don't want to clean my room, mom and dad. I'm not going to do that. Or would he be like, sure, I would like to clean my room because I love you. And I want, to, I want to do the right thing, mom and dad. Wow. Yeah, right? Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Yeah. Or maybe if you're at school and, you know, and, and someone... And someone is in the back of the classroom and they're kind of telling jokes and laughing and not listening to, to the teacher, then would Jesus be saying, yeah, you should just joke around and not listen to your teacher? Or would Jesus say, you should, he's looking right at Mrs. Radcliffe back there. Would, would you say, no, I should listen to my teacher. I should make sure that they know that I'm cared for. We should listen to our teacher. That's right. Very good. So I want you to think about that today. And another, one, one other thing, I think the very most important thing we can do if we're supposed to be a Christian, if we're supposed to be representing Jesus wherever we go, the very most important thing that we can do whenever we're talking to somebody, whenever we can see somebody, is to let them know that Jesus loves them, right? So I've got these stickers today that I would like to hand out to you, and I want you to put those on and try to keep those stickers on as long as you can today and think about that whatever you're doing, if you're talking to a brother or sister, if you're talking to somebody else at church, or maybe, you're, maybe you see somebody at a store, or maybe you see a friend later on, make them sure that what it, what, whatever we do today, we want people to know that Jesus loves them. And we can do that by being kind, by doing the right thing, by being helpful, and by today wearing a sticker like that so people know, all right? So these are a little bit hard to get off there, so I'm just going to peel off one at a time. And we've got a pink one. Okay, we've got a red one. Anybody like a red one? Got a yellow one. Jesus loves you. Got an orange one. Bengals fans want the orange ones. We've got <laughs> a blue. We've got a green one. There we go. What color would you like, Daniel? Pink one. All right. Very good. So remember, when it, the Bible says that we represent Jesus wherever we go, that means that for all of us adults too, think about how can what we do and say today, how can we help the people around us know that Jesus loves them? Should we have a prayer? Yeah, right on your t-shirt. There you go. That's a good spot. And you hide yours. Oh. <laughs> and now it's there. Now you can see it. You ready? Should we fold our hands and say a prayer? God, thank you that we get to represent you, that we get to be kind of your partners wherever we go. We pray that we'll remember to be kind to people. We'll pray to remember to think about how you would treat people and help us when we talk today, help us when we listen today, help us when we go to a store or whatever we do today. Help us remember that our main job is to help people know that you love them so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for coming up today. All right. Well, and as I said, we have a special God at Work interview today, so I invite Mike to come on up as well. This, again, is a time, uh, one goal is just for us to get to know each other better as a church. Sometimes there, there may be people that you've been worshiping together with for 30 years, or there may be people that you've only seen for a couple of times. And so something that we want to make sure that we can do is have a little bit of time where we get to know each other a little bit better. And then again, see how Sunday connects to Monday and how our faith connects to our daily life. So thank you for being willing to be a part of the Got It Work interview today. And, and again, just to begin, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, like where you're from, how long you've been uh, a part of uh, church here, and then maybe something, you know, something that you enjoy sure. doing. First, I guess, is this working okay? Make sure yeah, that sounded good. There. All right. Um, well, first off, thank you for asking me to do this. A little about myself. Grew up in Deschler, Ohio, so not too far from here. Graduated Patrick Henry. Go Patriots. Um, <laughs> after that, went to University of Finley and then 
kind of went all over the place. I uh, was active duty military for almost five years. Oh, God, we've been, let's see, Fort Knox, Fort Leonard Wood, Fort Lewis, overseas, back, and then joined the civilian world, worked in Michigan, Columbus, and now up here, Finley area. So made a full trip around the world and made it back home. And still in the Army Reserves. I'm a major there where I'm stationed in Hawaii. So every three months, I get a hard trip to Hawaii to go to work. <laughs> Lindsay loves that one. Very good. And, and yeah, maybe just introduce your family a little okay. bit if people aren't. So yeah, I got uh, my wife, Lindsay, over here. I'm sure everyone's seen our clan. We take up about the whole <laughs> front row. We got three of them there. We got Audrey, Danielle, and Grady. And then our uh, son, Florian, he's in the back uh, nursery room. So. Very, very good. All right. Well, again, you, you talked about a little bit of Army Reserve work, and so you, you have both sides for the reserve mm -hmm. side and then for your, for your daily work. So give us a little bit of idea, like what... What, are, what is your work? What are some of the things that you uh, do on a typical day? Like sure, that? so I have uh, a civilian job, work uh, with TC Energy. I don't know if anyone's heard of that. It used to be called Trans Canada. So uh, natural gas pipelines. Um, I have the Finley area, which runs from Toledo down to Marysville, Paulding area all the way east to Port Clinton. And we are the transmission natural gas pipelines that transfer it to the uh, distributors, so the ones who bring it into your homes. So we have the big, larger type pipes that uh, can run quite high pressure uh, out in the middle of nowhere through the fields. Uh, so I oversee operations for that. Wow. That's, and what are some things that that job entails? Like, I mean, have you talked, any? A lot of uh, re regulation, dealing with audits, governments, Incidents, unfortunately, we have those. We just had one actually the day of our golf outing that evening. We got called. A farmer was doing his own tile, didn't call the 811 dig, and decided to hit a 20 inch gas pipeline with his tile plow. Um, luckily, it did not rupture. It did have a dent, made for an interesting week. Uh, talking about God, that was one instance there where if that farmer didn't believe in God, he should after that incident. He's very lucky to be alive. If he would have punctured that thing, him and all his workers around him would have been obliterated. So it's an industry like that. You don't realize what you're dealing with until it's too late. So really important. Yeah, the things mm -hmm. that none of us really think about, all the pipelines that are all over the place, but we're very grateful that there are people that are paying attention to it and are helping to keep things safe. Yeah. And anything you want to tell us about that kind of the reserve work that you do? Oh, well, it's a new unit. Uh, I'm in... A chemical, biological, radiological nuclear officer. So oh. Seaburn is what they call it in the Army. Um, so I am the OIC out at the, the 303rd Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. So they have all these terms in the Army. I'm sure no one knows yeah. what they mean. Uh, but really, my responsibility is the defense uh, if chemical weapons were ever used. So all the troops in the field, uh, protecting them, make sure they have the proper equipment, the proper... Um, protection gear, sensors, all that type of uh, things. And then a couple years ago, I was in Germany for that. I was actually in Germany when Russia invaded Ukraine. So I got the task of briefing the commanding general of Army Europe and Africa on potential issues with nuclear weapons with Russia. So that wow, so I got thrown into the fire real quick on that one. Wow. Well, when you think about, again, you can go on both sides here, civilian work and, and our military work, but what, are, what, what would some of the best things about your work be, things that you enjoy doing that you're thankful for? Um, on the TC side, it's constantly, there's no day that's exactly the same. Um, you would think it would be just natural gas pipelines, pipelines stay there. There's always change with regulations, with uh, different construction projects going on on the line, so there's no one day that is the same and then on the military side just the people the people the travel the opportunities things you don't get in the civilian side usually yeah um, one day you're in station in michigan next day you're living in germany for a year and now going to hawaii so just the constant travel and yeah. never know what to expect the difficult job of being in hawaii is that that's a yeah. It's, it's Hawaii is not as good as right you think. It's, it's not i i would not want to go back yeah. They have spam there still, is it? Yeah, it's 
Yeah. Spam is from Minnesota, if you didn't know that. It's, it, <laughs> it, it's supposed to be that Hawaii is the most popular state for Spam, where they ship a lot of Spam. Surprise, so right? They don't have meat there, like, you know, it's not like there's a lot of cattle going around, so. Very good. Little, little minor detail there. <laughs> so aside from Spam, uh, what would be some things that are challenging about your work? Um, challenging, I would say, it kind of goes, I use it as a positive, but change in the unknown as well. It can be both. Yeah. Um, and having my team having to accept those changes, that's a challenge. You know, regulations are always changing. Our company philosophy is always changing. And the team I have uh, with TC is a very senior laden group. So when these changes come, they don't necessarily like it. So trying to mold your team to fit what the new atmosphere is. Yeah. And you feel like on a, I mean, you mentioned the one pipeline that was kind of hit by the farmer that hadn't paid attention. Is it how how often is there a leak or any kind of issues that you have to deal with? That something um, hits? Leaks. I was. I don't want to say they're common, but like there's minor leaks. Something of that nature, you know, knock on wood, that was my first experience in my area, but it happens, and you may see them in the news. There was one, I think, last year down in West Virginia that actually ruptured in the mountains in a big fireball. So unfortunately, it does occur, um, but that's why, as operations, we go out, right. we have all these regulations to check the pipe, test the pipe, to ensure that that does not happen. Anything we should know about natural gas pipelines around us we should be aware of, or things we can do to be safer? No, just the biggest thing is the 811. If you're doing any digging at all, make sure you call. All right. And what about, the, you know, we talk about God at work. How, how is it that you think about seeing God in the midst of reserves or in the midst of your, your daily work? I mean, you, you already said one thing, seeing God at work is preventing the guy from blowing himself up in the midst of that. But, you know, other ways that you, that you kind of see God in the midst of your, of your daily work? I kind of see it indirectly, almost through my family with the amount of travel and work and stress that it is to be able to have, and I'll use Lindsay, someone to watch the kids, take care of the kids. You know, when I was living in Germany a year, you know, not too many wives would be okay with that. You know, we only had three kids at the time, but still, to go away for a full year, um, but for her to be okay with that, you know, I, I can't say enough about that. Yeah, very good. And then what are some ways that we can be Praying for you, praying for people in the reserves, praying for people in your in your line of work. Um, I would say just recognize, and not just directly for me, but the team. Uh, you don't really think about pipelines, things like that, until you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, when natural gas isn't there, you don't have heat. Uh, you don't have, in some places, electricity. So just playing, praying for the industry and knowing what's there. And it is a dangerous job. And a lot of these contractors that they hire to do these projects, they're digging around live lines. It's, it's a constant, they're, they're welding into live lines. I didn't know that until I took this job. Oh. You know, there's pipelines that are 500 pounds of pressure and they're torching right into it. And it's, it's all, they've got it down to a science. They know you're constantly measuring if it's an explosive atmosphere, uh, but these guys are really good at what they do, but unfortunately, incidents do right. happen. Yeah. Very good. Well, let's join together in a word of prayer as we, as we lift up Michael and others. Uh, Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the reminder again that everything we do, we are to do for your glory. Uh, thank you for his work in the reserves and for all those who work in the military. We know that there's uh, so many people that are making sacrifices, whether it's being away from their family for a long time or whether it's being in harm's way. Uh, we thank you for their willingness to make those sacrifices to help protect our country, to help protect our world. Uh, we continue to pray that you would make all wars end. We pray that uh, once again, that there would not be chemical weapons, that there would not be nuclear weapons. We thank you for every day that we go by without uh, attacks and struggles. And thank you for all those that do their best to make this world a safe place each and every day. We also thank you for the natural gas pipeline industry and for the service that they provide, for all of the, the heat that is uh, done there and for all, all, all the things that we need that, we, that run through gas. Thank you for the many ways that you protect those workers every day. We ask that you continue to, to keep them safe to help, uh, man, especially people that are welding or doing extra dangerous work right next to pipelines. That, uh, we ask that all those protocols will be followed, that they continue to be protected and help all of us to do our part to 
make sure that we uh, call before we dig and if we see or smell strange things bubbling up from the ground that we also call and we know how to keep this world safe. Uh, finally, thank you for the gift of marriage. Thank you for the gift of husbands and wives who love each other, who make sacrifices for each other. And thank you that we have a church family as well, that when we are uh, facing time alone, facing extra struggles and maybe needing extra help, that you would help us to reach out to one another, that we can be there to support each other, to give a helping hand, because that's what it means to be part of the church, that we're there for each other in the joys and in the struggles of life. So again, we thank you, God, that you are with us, not just today, but every day. And we pray again that you would remind us uh, each and every day that we represent you and what we do and say, and that we would work uh, with all of our hearts uh, to serve you and to serve the people around us. And we ask those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, thank you very much thank for you. being willing to come up today and be a, a part of that. And look forward to getting your, to know your family better as you continue to be part of new creation. Thank you very much. mind is work with reserves and with military, thinking about some songs that we have of talking about the God of angel armies. It's also why we use a Bible translation that we know uh, sometimes this world can be a very scary place. Sometimes we can face all sorts of what ifs, and especially yeah, as I think about Russia and Ukraine and uh, escalations there. There's a lot of things that are so unsure, but having that reassurance that the God of angel armies is by our side and that when we turn to him, we don't have to sit in our fears, but we can give them to the Lord who is always with us. That's what this song is all about, to help us focus on God's presence.
invite us to continue now as we speak together the statement of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. We continue to worship the Lord through our offerings, a way that we can give back a portion that the Lord has first given us to further the mission and ministry of the church. And as we pass around the offering plates, whether or not you have a material offering to place in the basket, please do place your hand in the basket and think how it is that you can offer yourself in service to the Lord, remembering that Bible verse that you represent Christ everywhere you go this week. Dear Lord, we thank you for each and every gift that you've given us. We pray that you would bless and multiply these offerings, that your will may be done here as it is in heaven. Amen. I invite us to join together in prayer as we lift up all of our prayer concerns and all those who are in need. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of another day. We thank you again for uh, the beautiful weather that you've given to us. We thank you for the beautiful company that you've given to us in one another. And thank you that you give us that call of representing you out in the world. We especially pray that we would remember that call this week, that our greatest job is to help other people know of your love, of your grace, of your mercy. We ask that whatever we're doing, whether we're volunteering, whether we're at home, whether we're at school or at work or at the store, anywhere we find ourselves, help us keep in mind that we are being your servants and that the way we treat others is the way that we treat you. Father, we also thank you that you are good and merciful. We thank you, Lord, that you are the divine physician. And we continue to lift up to all those who are in need of your healing touch, trusting in your mercy to bring healing to them. Today we especially pray for Scott and for Phyllis. We also pray for Andy and for Jeanette, for Matt and Linda. We lift up to you Pat and Tony and Nicole. We pray for Ryan, for Keith, for Linda and for Bridget, for Bob, for Don, and for all those that we now name either silently or aloud who are in need of your healing touch. Kathy. Lord, we lift up all those who are facing heart conditions and ask your healing presence over them, Lord Jesus. You know that you have given us that heart is such an amazing 
uh, organ that keeps us alive each and every day and the wonders of all of our organs working. Uh, and again, we pray uh, for Don and for all those uh, looking for favorable test results and uh, for continued healing and wholeness and health, Lord Jesus. We thank you as well for all those who are seeking victory over cancer, that you are with them, that you love them. And we thank you for a remission for my cousin Kathy that has cancer was not found in her last scan. Thank you so much for that. We pray the same thing for all those who are facing battles against diseases, that you would bring healing, that you would bring remission, that you would bring strength to their life, Lord God. We lift up as well Faith Assembly of Believers and Pastor John and the mission of their congregation. We ask that you would help all the churches of Ottawa and Putnam County, that we would be one in Christ, that we can work together for the common good and continue to love and support and strengthen each other. We lift up to you the prison system, those who are incarcerated and their families and those who are employed by the prison systems, asking for protection, asking for hearts to be changed, Lord Jesus, asking for healing for mental illness, for all those uh, that are involved, Lord God, that people who find themselves in jail can start over and can find a new life. And we as a society can find how it is we can better help people to uh, become good citizens and know that they are loved and cared for and get skills to not go back to crime, but to be uh, helpful members of society. We do pray for teachers and school administrators and for the students as we continue with the new school year that you would bless and protect each one of them. And Jesus, how we pray for all those involved in another school shooting. We just ask for your grace and mercy to be poured out on those who lost loved ones, on those who are living in fear. We pray that school shootings would stop, Lord God, and that you show us everything we can possibly do to protect our students and to help all those, especially that are facing mental illness and so many struggles and can't find the help that they need. Help us change our ways, Lord, as a society and a world to make this a better and a safer place. Lord God, we lift up our military and our armed forces as well. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. We pray for an end to battles in the Middle East and for all wars around this world. Help leaders find peaceful solutions and change the hearts of those who want to kill and destroy. Lord, we thank you as well for Mike and for Jane who celebrate birthdays this coming week and also for Joe and Lisa Benro and their anniversary. We pray your blessing on them on another year of marriage and ask that you would strengthen all the relationships here that we can better honor you by loving one another as you desire. All these things and all that only you know we need, we lift up to you and we ask for your will to be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we have our sending song, we have some announcements of upcoming events. Uh, so, and We didn't have candy in the children's sermon today, but there's lots of candy in the parade over in Kaleida. So if you want to Port Isaiah and all the band members and Noah here. We got a lot of people that are going to be in the band marching as a part of that. A nice big long parade. You can head over there and invite you to join those festivities. And certainly, please come back and invite anyone that you can to join us next week for a very special Rally Day celebration. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor Dan said earlier, Rally Day is next Sunday. Um, we're going to have bingo, bounce house, face painting. Uh, maybe a balloon lady, and uh, beach drinks and ice novelties will be provided. Um, so if you're able to make it, there's a sign-up sheet. You can bring your favorite side dish. That would be much appreciated. Um, Financial Peace University is coming up. I think Mindy Losh is going to be heading that up.
So um, I'm going to pass these out if, if you're not able or if you know someone that maybe could use this, um, but not this fall. We're, we're going to offer it in January, a session in January, then a session this summer. Um, there is a little, what do you call these, QR codes that everybody can take a picture and it brings you right to the link and you can get signed up. Um, but it, um, it's just a way to get out of debt, car loans, student loans, things like that. Um, Anyone can use it. Yeah. I really like one of Dave Ramsey's famous quotes is, imagine what the people of God could do for the kingdom of God if they were debt free. And if we are more able to be generous. So. Okay. And then the last announcement we have, uh, two weeks from today, start Sunday school. Um, there will be a women's Bible study this year. Uh, they're going to study the uninvited. Um, if we see Kathy Stinson, for more details, I believe there's a book you can purchase for that for $10. So if you're interested in that, ladies, just see Kathy. There will also be an adult Bible study. Uh, more information on that to come um, be very similar to what, what was going on last year. And then we have the Young Disciples uh, and Parents Meeting will be held September 22nd during the learning hour. Um, and then the Young Disciples will continue to meet during the learning hour moving forward. Then there will also be high school and elementary and preschool classes as well. Um, so looking forward to that starting again in two weeks. And then New Member Sunday will be on September, Sunday, September 29th. And we're going to celebrate the new members who've joined over the past year or so. Um, and if you are one of those families, feel free to reach out to the church office uh, so we can get you more details. I have one more announcement. Yeah, Kathy. Sorry, guys. I don't Year because of you, uh, it's been very, very busy, and I thank you all for that. Um, I do have a community need that I did want to put out there. I just started working with a family um, out of Lipstick who has a child who we don't have a diagnosis in yet, but he's non communicative, but yet he is very intelligent. So he can use a communication board in school. Um, that we've been trying to find funds to be able to get him one for um, home. We, can, we have found a uh, $200 refurbished tablet, um, Apple tablet, which is what he's familiar with and he knows how to use well. Um, so we're trying to find some <coughs> funding for this child to be able to have a tablet at home, if you could imagine how difficult it is not to be able to speak um, and not communicate your ideas. It brings a lot of anger issues and a lot of other, other issues and it would be so much simpler. He's eight years old, um, his family, wonderful family. Um, we're trying to find that and a, um, a little, the cover that you put on it so in case it would drop it would be okay. And um, the app, that we're going to put an app on it. And this way it's way cheaper than trying to go and get a communication device from the companies because they're very expensive. They run you know, another 12 to 2,000. So this would be much cheaper. So we are in need of that if anyone is willing to help with um, getting a, a little bit towards that, that would be wonderful. Um, I did want to talk about a God sighting real quick, and one of mine this year was um, watching people sign up for the women's group. Um, it seems some, sometimes it just seems like some of the simplest things. I know it, it keeps me accountable. Church keeps me accountable. It makes me much a much better human being. Um, so just something to think about. It's a women's group. It's, it's fun and just very relaxed. Um, some of the outreach that we have done this year, I just want you to know, has reached to other, gone to other churches. We've heard a lot in the community on how giving our church is and what a wonderful job we've done. But we have, I'm also now starting to see churches um, do things that we are doing here, which is really nice. Even some of the same things that we had outreach um, reaches for, like our um, homeless shelters. So I thank you for that, for your generosity. Um, it means a lot. It just, and it's just, ever growing, and sometimes we don't know that. Um, I just wanted to go over just a couple things that we have coming up, which is will be our shoebox for women, um, our, our shoebox for our Christmas that we do every year, where we fill them and we send them overseas. We will have an angel tree, and there will be a box coming in. Linda Pollitz asked if we could put a box for feminine needs out that they are collecting for um, Hancock County and Putnam County. Um, and next week, hopefully, 
and if i schedule landing, we're going to be delivering two freezers to the underserved population over at the apartments there at tower manor, so they can have two small freezers each person will will get a freezer, have about ten on the list just so they can then put some of their food in that they might get from you know knapsacks or something like that. they have no rooms in here, those kind of refrigerated freezers, so it'll help them be able to have food throughout the month. so i thank you for all that you're doing and just know that you're making a huge difference in our in our community and you impact our our community beyond it. so thank you. Thank you, Kathy. It's a great transition for our sending song of what it means to follow Jesus in our daily life. So please stand as we sing, I Will Follow You. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Yeah.